Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to go to my camera view. And my camera view, if I go to, just hide this panel for a second. If I select my camera, I just right click on the viewport up there. And I'm using a still cam. And whether or not you want to have it targeted and so on, it's, it's all, um, that's sort of all up to you. I'm using a standard film gate of 36 millimeters, a focal length of 28. That's all sort of real world stuff that you can just get a, a lens and go out and shoot a photograph with. Then I've got an f-stop of 16. I am implementing a vertical shift here, which is sort of a perspective correcting lens. and um, I've actually uh, pretty much only shoot with perspective correcting lenses now for shooting architecture. It's just it's fantastic to be able to get out there and and you know keep the vertical straight and all that stuff. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, if if I change my vertical shift to zero and my camera is actually looking up at the image. Uh, it's a convention in most architectural illustrations and photography to straighten out your verticals. So I just hit guess vertical and that will flip it. Now, one of the things to be cautious of is that if you were trying to match an image where we've got a vertical shift, we we're trying to match that into a photographic backplate exactly, um, there are some things that you have to take into account, like that vertical shift, that make it a bit harder. So it's it's if you're going to do something with an environment where you're going to drop this in specifically to a photo, you can run into some challenges there uh, in in terms of getting it set up. But since we're just going to work on this as a separate thing, we can go ahead and and do that. One of the things that I do most of the time when I'm working with V-Ray physical cameras is we want the exposure on, right? That's going to be important. But I tend to turn off vignetting. And I also leave my white balance at, you know, something that's just white. I'm not, I'm not having V-Ray uh, control my white balance and my vignetting. I prefer to do that in post. So you've got a little bit more flexibility and a little more... Um, uh, room to experiment so that it's not actually just rendered into your scene. Got a question? Uh, so why does, for something balanced, why does uh, uh, setting a, a color uh, render out the opposite color? Okay, good question. The, the question is why does, uh, why does setting the color in the white balance, for instance, if we're white balancing to a custom balance that has this D65 sort of neutral, but it's a blue, and that's actually going to produce a warmer tone, it's, it's like a subtractive filter in a way is, is, how, is how it's working. So it's balancing it by telling it what to sort of which way to remove it. Now, you could, you could probably flip the math and make it do the other way, but it's just a, a convention for how you, uh, what color you want to sort of remove from the scene. So we're going to leave this at neutral. And then right now we've got two controls that we need to really think about for our V-Ray physical camera from a still standpoint. And it changes a little bit different when you're using a movie camera or an animated camera. And, uh, and I think we'll talk about that as part of tomorrow when we get into some animation topics. But the shutter speed right now and and actually, I've thrown you guys a curveball right from the beginning because our shutter speed is um, measured in fractions of a second. And right now, if I put in 0.25 as a fraction of a second, that means it's 0.25 over one, which is going to give you um, is going to give you four. So that means right now with 0.25, I've got a four second shutter on this thing, which is a really long exposure. And this scene was set up previously to be for a night scene, but now we want to do with the V-Ray Sun and Sky, so we want to look at it more with an appropriate setting for 
a sunny day. Now there are a lot of different ways to go about setting this up. Um, there is something that is called the sunny 16 rule and it's a rule of thumb for photographers on a sunny day with the sun out uh, on pretty clear sky a general rule of thumb is that if you're shooting at an f-stop of 16 then your shutter speed can be your shutter speed and your film ISO can generally be about the same number which is uh, 100 for an ISO and a shutter speed of about 100 or 125. I try to keep these values to be representative of accurate values that I know of from a camera, the way a camera works. Having an ISO film speed in something that's digital is a bit of a misnomer because it's not like we're putting in new film speed in there and it's not like our, our uh, you know, it's not like our digital camera, you know, the way it changes the, the way it captures that, you know, it's not like we're going to get more grain on it from the sensor. Uh, so one of the nice things about being able to do this in V-Ray is that you can work with any ISO and not have any repercussions, which you can't do in the real world. The higher your ISO goes up, the more grain and noise you introduce into your image, but the more sensitive and reactive it is to light at a smaller shutter speed. Um, for those of you, if, if you're familiar with the sort of optics and cameras and you go out and shoot, um, great job. For those of you that uh, are still sort of learning about cameras, and um, I absolutely suggest that even if you run out and you get a point and shoot camera and figure out how to use it in manual mode, or even don't even use manual mode, but go out and actually pay attention to what it does when it exposes settings, the more you work with cameras and optics, the better your rendered results are going to be for anything that you do in CG because you're going to have the optimum control of, of what your scene does. In V-Ray, what the V-Ray physical camera does is it actually tone maps the scene so that it gives you more of a physical response like a digital camera or like a, a film camera might do. There are plenty of resources online um, and usually what you can do is you can go to Google and you can type in something like exposure value chart. And our friends at Wikipedia, you know, this is a pretty common thing to see these exposure values. It's a pretty nifty chart because essentially what it's doing is it's giving you an f-stop across the top. So the uh, larger your f-stop is, the larger, the higher you go out to this value, the smaller your aperture opens up. So that means that the smaller that is, the more light that it has to let in in order to expose it. So typically you see, um, you know, people out there, our sunny 16 rule, for instance, happens to be right at, um, I think that happens at zero. Or does it happen up here at 16? It happens at, uh, at 15. That's the sunny 16 rule. So if we looked at um, our f-stop of 16 and our 1 125th for, you know, our, our ISO. Now what, what happens here, what you have to do in order to read this table is actually look at your lighting condition. And so this lighting condition gives you a number that says typical scene in full or slightly hazy sunlight, distinct shadows, great. That was our 15 number. And we went up here to 15, and we said we were at an f-stop of 16. We go to 15, and we find out, aha, we're at 1 125th. So we know that our rule applies. Now, because of the sun that we put in there, we don't quite know if it's going to be, you know, is it slightly soft shadows? Is it a little later in the day? We were starting to get it to like 4 o'clock or something. Well, that's an exposure value of 14. And if you look at 14, we take 14 over to our f-stop of 16. Where were we? So that's 1 60th. 
and that's essentially exposed twice as long. The shutter speed is open twice as long. So that's one full stop difference. But one full stop is great because if we just get into the ballpark with our V-Ray camera, we can adjust the exposure in real time with our V-Ray frame buffer and figure out what our optimal results are. And before we continue, I think I've just got a quick question here. Okay, so the question online is, is there a difference between increasing the shutter speed and ISO in a still image? Both increase the capture of light. Would ISO increase the intensity of colors or something? And it's a great question because it goes back to what I was talking about earlier where we're not dealing with true optics inside of the V-Ray physical camera from the tone mapping standpoint. It's not introducing grain and and using a smaller aperture is not giving us a little better contrast versus a larger aperture which might in introduce softness. Um, so these values are truly interchangeable in V-Ray cameras. You can absolutely adjust either your ISO or your shutter speed. Most architectural photographs that that are out there start with this like 100 ISO and and a smaller aperture like an f-stop of 16 because in real optics the you get a sharper clearer image and it also helps for things like long exposures right if you're gonna do something where cars are blurring by or you want you know something people to be blurry you want those longer exposures. So the longer exposure values would be controlled by a combination of leaving the shutter open longer, and that might mean that you'd need to change your ISO. 